The Channel Islands are a small group of islands lying just off the coast of Brittany in northern France. British possessions since the 11th century, they were the only parts of the UK occupied by the Germans during World War II. Considered to be of no military value in 1940, Winston Churchill ordered the Channel Islands declared open towns and partially evacuated the population to Britain before German forces arrived in June 1940. The islanders who chose to remain endured a German occupation until May 1945. The capture of British territory was a great propaganda victory for the Germans, and Hitler was obsessed with holding on to the islands, diverting an astounding 11% of the building supplies for the Atlantic Wall project to fortify the islands of Jersey, Guernsey, Alderney and Sark. An entire German division garrisoned the islands. On Jersey today are some of the best-preserved German Atlantic Wall defences in existence. The British never invaded the islands during World War II. Rather, after D-Day in June 1944, Churchill ordered the islands to be bypassed and cut off from supplies from France, the Germans and the islanders enduring privations and near starvation until the German surrender in May 1945. After the German troops were transported off the islands as prisoners of war, the fortifications were partially dismantled, looted, and with some bunkers being sealed up full of German equipment. Several have now been opened, and some have been restored to how they looked when the Germans used them. Today there are three surviving German coastal artillery batteries around the Jersey coast. Battery Motka was constructed atop a headland at Le Londe, covering St. Ernst Bay on Jersey's northwest coast. The major feature is the seven-storey tall Marina Palstand III tower, used for observing targets out at sea. On the top deck would have been mounted a Zeetakt radar. Nine were planned for Jersey, but only three of these towers were actually built. The battery is protected by several anti-aircraft gun positions and Ringstender, or Tobruks, as the Allies called them. These are small bunkers with an aperture at the top that originally mounted a tank turret, usually from a captured French vehicle, the Renault FT-17. The battery's main armament was four French Canon de 155mm GPF, renamed by the Germans the 15.5cm K418F. One gun remains in situ at the site today. These guns could be rotated 360 degrees to hit targets anywhere around Jersey and had a range of 19.5 kilometers or 12 miles. There are also two large gun barrels, including a 21 centimeter Mirza 18 that were recovered from the foot of the cliffs after the British Army dumped them in the sea in 1945. Many of the bunkers at Battery Moltke are in a ruinous or derelict state. But they are worth exploring, if you don't mind the dark and a bit of crouching. Sadly, during my fumbling around inside the bunkers, I didn't find any rusty German helmets, only a few rusty beer cans. There are, however, bunkers at all of the sites on Jersey that were sealed by the British Army in 1945 and remain sealed still, undoubtedly containing abandoned German weapons and equipment. Here we have a well-preserved sentry bunker at Batoi Modka. The best preserved battery on Jersey is Batoi Lotringen, overlooking St. Aubyn's Bay and the famous Elizabeth Castle and St. Helia Harbour. Constructed by organisation Tot Workers in 1941, Battery at Lottingen was manned by the 3rd Battery, Naval Artillery Battalion 604. The main guns were four 15cm L45 naval guns made by Krupp in 1917. Gun number one is still in place. Ammunition Bunker 7 is beside this gun. The shells were stored in ready-use bays beside the gun when in action. To the rear was a barracks hut, administration building, and personnel bunker, only the latter remaining today. 
The gun was thrown into the sea by the British Army and recovered by helicopter in 1998. Marina Paulstand 1 is intact, standing 16 metres or 52 feet tall, with four main floors. Each floor was assigned to a different gun. There is also an open top floor which once mounted a 20mm Ehrlichon flak gun. The type M132 command bunker is completely intact. On the top are an armoured naval rangefinder and two steel observation cupolas with armoured glass. The Germans used the rangefinder in conjunction with a naval periscope to work out the direction of targets out at sea. The command bunker has two floors with nine rooms. The lower floor including other ranks quarters, two officers rooms, a standby room, central heating plant and a coal store. The upper floor has an operations room, washroom and lavatories, first aid room and a telephone exchange, all restored by volunteers back to how it looked in 1943-44. The other guns have been removed, however the bunkers, the ammunition storage facilities and the personnel bunkers and anti-aircraft positions all remain intact today. All of the beaches on Jersey have surviving German fortifications. These consist of a high sea wall to deter tanks when landing and defiladed bunkers with machine guns and or French tank turrets in so-called Tobruks. One of the best examples is now the Channel Islands Military Museum overlooking St. Ernes Bay. This bunker originally housed a 10.5 cm gun and has machine gun posts to cover all approaches up the beach. On the roof is the turret from a French tank. Inside is a mass of German military equipment left behind after the surrender. People are still discovering abandoned German military equipment even today. This helmet, for example, was found in 2017 in the back of a barn. The volume of German material crammed into this bunker is astounding. The most famous German structure on Jersey is now called the Jersey War Tunnels, formerly the German Underground Hospital. This is a bit of a misnomer, as the structure Holgangsanlage 8 is a partially completed complex of one kilometres of tunnels in St. Lawrence. Partly built by forced labourers under appalling conditions in 1941-42, many died and remained buried inside. The tunnels were later converted to a 500-bed field hospital in late 1943. It now serves as the island's main World War II museum, explaining the German occupation in great detail. Those of you who follow my videos will probably notice the great similarity to the tunnel complex I filmed beneath Hitler's house on the Orbis Salzburg in Bavaria. Outside the tunnel is a 20mm flak gun that was found buried in a field in 1971, and the entrance is dominated by a replica Stug 3 assault gun and a Kubelwagen field car. The Jersey museums are littered with German military motorcycles grabbed by locals after the German surrender. At one of Jersey's highest points, the Neolithic Le Ogbe burial mound is a German command bunker. This is the command bunker for Abschnitt Ost, or Eastern Sector of Jersey, containing telephone and radio communications with all of the strong points, as well as the island's main battle headquarters in St. Peter. The site was fortified by barbed wire fences, four static machine gun posts, 64 slit trenches, and three fire trenches. The bunker was used during emergencies. At other times, the German staff lived in a nearby requisitioned house. Today it serves as a memorial to forced workers brought to Jersey from all over Europe to build German fortifications. What I've shown you in this film is only a selection of dozens of German occupation sites in Jersey. Research and preservation of these sites is underway.
They demonstrate Hitler's obsession with holding on to the tiny slice of Britain that he managed to capture in World War II, and stand as memorials to the people forced to build them and the islanders who lived under their shadow. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box.